in my brain, all I remember is Andy McNabb, Andy McNabb, breathe, breathe, breathe. If people say to me, you think you're something special, I say, I don't think I'm something special, but I'd like to see you get through half of what I have. And smile. And then he was like, come on then, big man, come on, big man. Let it off then, let it off. So this guy was like, obviously letting shots off now. Me and my other friend was just like, obviously ducking through cars. <laughs> what are you talking, who are you talking to? I went, go on then, finish your job, you might. And he walked up and went, bang, bang. So I've gone like that and grabbed it and he just shot me in the leg, but he's put me on the floor. He's gonna kill me. Yeah, so they tried to do me for a gun charge at the time, but obviously <clears> I was like innocent. And my leg was looked mangled. And the surgeon, as we got in, I said, whatever you do, yeah, keep my leg. I don't care how much it costs, keep my leg. You are your karma. So whatever you do will come back to you. Anything. I cannot be killed by a man who has his belly button, his nipple, and he's a tongue pierced. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are with the one and only Marvin Herbert, fresh off of Car Boot Wars. Biggest character, the Car Boot, biggest character in Britain. I think it's crazy, brother. How's it going? Uh, do you know what? Uh, it's challenging, but it's worth it. It's new and amazing. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of going to the Car Boot? It's like everywhere I go, it just sort of opens my eyes a little bit more to society and where we're at and where we've been kind of thing. It's kind of, I, I'm a bit of a weirdo. You knew quite a few people down there. That was mad that you ran into someone you hadn't seen in 30 years, bro. No, it was longer than that. It's 40 years. And what was the story there? Um, From start to finish, because I think the listeners would love to hear that, bro. It sounds like a story. So I'm in um, Feltham. I think I was about 16 or 17. I was in there for a robbery. I was a real wild child kid. So I'm in there. They bang me up with this kid, Popeye, with one eye. How come with one eye? He had one eye again. I banged up with my wife and he had one eye. And basically, obviously, when I banged up with him, I never see what I was doing to him as bullying. Do you understand? And... Obviously, because of the life I've led and the journey I've been on in the last 10 years, I realised that he really got... I could have really traumatised him. That was what I was thinking. So for the last, say, six months, I've been thinking... Oh, in like, what way? In what way did you traumatise him? Like, what was the situation? Well, I'll tell you now. So basically, I've traumatised this kid because I have to go back to where it was and what I was doing, if that makes sense, right? So... I'm 16, 17, I'm in Felton. I'm banged up with this young kid. I banged up with him because he was weakish, weaker than us lot, but he had one eye, so he was different. So because he was different, I felt that I needed to protect him in some way. So I said, bang up with me. So he's banged up with me. However, what I was saying was going through my journey and getting to the position I got to, I actually realised that me trying to toughen this kid up, I'd actually bullied him and I could have traumatised him. So for the last six months, seven months, I've been thinking, saying to the universe, I need to bump into him, I need to see him, to like let him know that I'm really sorry for what I've done, because I used to make him do things like, go, aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> so I go, aye, aye. <laughs> aye, aye. Like, 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 I, I don't know, I was just trying to get, I don't know, man, I was just trying to make him feel comfortable having one eye, because I said to him, right, I've had an eye, mate, I'll be this, I'll be that, liven up, toughen up, and like, you guys have just, I've just allowed you, right, to kick and punch me as hard as you can. I'm 52, bruv. All you lot done was redded my skin a little. <laughs> right, am I lying? Yeah. No, you're telling the truth. Right, so well, that's a video. Kick me as hard as you can, punch me as hard as you can. So. I used to let people do this. So I used to think that everyone can do that. So when I used to tell people, tense up, and I used to hit them, I used to think they were like me. I didn't realise I was breaking them apart. Do you understand? So this kid, that kid that we see today, yeah, I, I, I used to not beat him, but I'd say, right, you've got to be able to take this, you've got to be able to take that. If you want to go in this world and you're a villain, we're in the, we're in the prison, right? So I'm trying to teach him how to be tough people. It's like even my cousin. Like I would troll him how to be a tough kid. But... I, I've traumatised him, not by not realising, because you just teach what you know in it. So I've always had him in my back of my mind about my eye, because I think that's why I lost my eye, because of him. 
And because I said I'll be able to live without a night, and I have perfectly bap, 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 crashed my wallet. So, yeah, it was an absolute blessing seeing him coming, well, coming here to do a podcast with you lot. However, I believe, I believe that this was for that, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Defa. Yeah. I agree with you. So, Ian, you got shot at one time as well, didn't you? Yeah. What's the situation? What happened with you? Why did you get shot at? Uh, I'm trying to rob my Rolex at the time. And you didn't want to give it up? No. Nah. So basically, we were running around the friend. car. <laughs> so no, we were with an old you. friend. Oh, you actually know who Um yeah. So basically, we went to this pub in Eastern. Eastern? What do you mean? Eastern, the place. Where is that? Uh, the area next door to St. Paul's. This is a rough in, area. In, in, in Bristol, yeah. yeah in rough area, Bristol, yeah. See, see, see. I forgot I'm in Bristol. See, I'm from. <laughs> oh, you're thinking London, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I jumped out the car. Next one, you know, I was getting pinned by the wall with the gun on my neck, saying like, oh, give up your rolly, give up your rolly. And then one of my friends of mine at the time smacked him off me. And then he was like, come on then, big man, come on, big man. Let it off then, let it off. So this guy was like, obviously letting shots off now. And then me and my other friends were just like, obviously ducking through cars. <laughs> Listen, I was thinking like, yo, this is f-ing mad. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then what happened? You didn't go to the police. You went home and then the police took your door off the engine. No, so off. basically... Um, oh, I remember this too clearly. I, I drove home. I dropped my friend home. I drove home. And then obviously that night he got arrested for something else. And then I picked him up at the station the next morning. So me and him went in Costco. Like, honestly, this was like clear as day. Went Costco, got some flipping bits and bobs and whatnot. And then we were driving past BRI, you know, like it's a hill. Yeah. And then on the other side, we see like bare police. We were just like, right, what the f- is going on down there? Listen, like, we was getting blocked in. They were like, armed police, armed police. Get down on the floor, get down on the floor. I was thinking... <laughs> <laughs> Victim but yeah, got, uh, the victim got arrested basically. Yeah, so they tried to do me for a gun charge at the time, but obviously <coughs> I was like innocent. Um, so that was just like NFA. Um, but yeah, just basically they took my car for about three, four months. They thought because you left, you did that you were the one yeah. shooting, didn't they? Yeah, they thought I was you the one shooting. Nah, 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 nah. Good friend. Yeah, bad yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say you make some bad friend choices. Yeah, obviously, you know, when you're young, you think everyone's Hunky dory, innit? How old are you? I was 20? Yeah. How yeah. old are you now? I'm 31 now. You didn't know that stuff would happen now, did it? No. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out. What happened with you, Marv? How did it, how did you get shot, man? That's a crazy story, right? Is that involving a Ro- Rolex as well? I remember watching a bit of something a while ago and I was like... Everyone thinks it's over a Rolex. No, it wasn't even a Rolex, it was a Panama. The Panama was a lure. It was a lure. It wasn't over a watch. Do you understand? It mm. was something that the person that shot me used as an excuse because he told the police that he took the watch off my friend and I sent my and then my friend sent me down there to pick the, to get the money or to shoot him. Right? But because he hadn't paid the money, he said that this guy, Kian, had sent me to shoot him. Yeah, and he's actually from Bristol, Kian. You know? No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So people are no, no. And then basically, it was bollocks, because Kian was my friend, he wasn't. At that time in my life, he was opening doors for me in Europe, do you know what I mean? And he'd done a lot in a way to, in the developing of the old mouth. Kian had a, a large, part to play in that. So Kian was a man who, this is what they said in their statement, that Kian asked, ordered me to go and kill the geezer over the watch. So when I've turned up to kill him over the watch, I've sh- went to shoot him, I went to shoot him and then he took the gun off me and it went off five times accidentally. That was their statement. That's what they said. Right? But it wasn't, never went like that. It was a thing where, like me and you go around my mate's house. Yeah. Like I'll bring him round your ass. Or no, he brings me round your ass. And then you're selling an article. And I say, I oh, can I take that? But I owe him money. So he says, Yeah, go on. I'm gonna be getting money off him and I'll 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 make sure you pay. Sweet, no problem. So the next day you get money and you give the money to me to go and pay him. But I don't. Right? A month later, you ring him up and say, Is anyone gonna go and pay for that bit? And you say, What? Didn't you pay? I'll give him the money to do, man. So when I've run the fellow out, I said, what the f*** are you doing? He went, what are you on about? I said, 
The watch, the money I'll give you, it's a paper the watch. Why aren't you paying me? He said, what's it got to do with you? I was like, oh, what? He said, what's it got to do with you? I said, what do you mean, what's it got to do with me? I said, it's my pal's watch. I said, what do you think do with me? I said, you have around my mate's house, I'll buy it for you getting the watch, mate. So I said, give the watch back, we'll pay for it. He said, I think you're trying to bully me. I was like, what? So now I'm getting angry. What are you talking? Who are you talking to? He said, why are you being like that? Bro? I said, what do you, bro, let me explain something to you. I took you around my pal's house. He give you a watch to pay at a later date. I give you the money to go and pay for the watch. You haven't paid for it. Now you're trying to tell me it ain't got nothing to do with me. He says, what everything to do with me? Now pay for the watch. I said, I'll further over more. I'll tell you what you can do. It's only a three grand watch. Keep the watch. I said, but I want to punch you in. So where are you? So he said, I'm Dan Paul Benoos. So I said, all right, sweet, see you in a minute. <clears throat> so I was with um, my nephew at the time we was running about, and I actually give him the gun to go and take in the house. I said, tell him I was going to go and punch his little c in there. And he was 42 then at the time, so he was 10 years, seven, five years older than me. And he was about 18, 19, starting with that, steroided up. And uh, I thought, oh, I want to smash him all over again. When I turned up, he weren't there. And then his mate was there. I had a few words with his mate. And then he came walking around the corner. So I walked up to him as if he was saying, come in, let's go up here where we can have the strain on. And he went, well, what's that? I said, you better do your job, mate. And I started walking towards him, thinking, as he pulled it up, I'll be able to grab it. And like, because people don't know, you know, you can pull them out of their hands, right? So I've gone like, grab it and... He just shot me in the leg, he put me on the floor. So like, I went, go on then, finish your job, you mug. And he walked up and went, bang, bang. And I thought, oh, oh, he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me. And then done me again, I thought, F he's gonna kill me. He can't kill me. And I just remembered, and I've said it before on other podcasts, I just remembered, I cannot be killed by a man who has his belly button, his nipple, and his lip and tongue pierced. <laughs> <laughs> so, please, oh, please. So my daughter was my daughter was two weeks old, and I thought, no way, no way, no way, bang. Yeah, and that was a mad. Was, <laughs> yeah, and the mad thing about it is when I'm lying on the floor, I've gone like I've gone to look up, and you know, like, I've just see the bullet. As it is, it was just like if you do that, that's all it felt like. It was weird. It was just like. Mad, like you see the x ray, right? So the bullet's flat, yeah. It's like it just hit me like that, it was weird. And I never felt no pain. I got my phone straight away. I was on the phone speaking to my people. So I had to tell my people who it was that done me in case I died. Because in my brain, all I remember was Andy McNabb, Andy McNabb, breathe, breathe, breathe. Because it's Bravo 2 Zero, they were talking about when you get shot, you got to slow the flow of blood down by breathing. So that's what I've done. And that's what I remember breathing. I thought, I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into shock. Right, do me a favour, get me a phone, get me a phone. I said, all right, and I told me mates what happened. And, uh, and then went hospital. And, and I, I remember waking up. I remember, before, my leg just looked mangled, right? Just looked mangled. So I remember, and the other thing, I've looked at the surgeon as we were going in, I said, whatever you do, yeah. Keep my leg, I don't care how much it costs. Keep my leg. And then I woke up, I remember waking up, looking down, I remember waking up, seeing all this thing on my leg and I wiggled my toes and I just smiled, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna walk. As long as you can wiggle your toes, you know you can walk. Simple, simple. If you can wiggle your toes, you can walk. What do you think that is then? Like, cause you save clearly by some divine intervention, right? Cause that's not humanly possible that you survived. To be fair, yeah. I never thought anything when it first happened. Yeah, so I'm back in the game. I'm doing. I'm in the. I'm in the hospital, <laughs> moving bits like you couldn't imagine, like bits. <laughs> I can't because of, because of legalities. I can't mention the amount. Yeah, I want to just say they were, we're moving bits. Yeah, and there was. Stacks of money. I was at a private private room and it was like stacks of money as you open the door behind the door. Yeah, because in them hospitals it's weird. As the door opens, it stays open unless they pull it. So when it opens, it just stays open. The the money behind there, and then there's um all the 
I was eating, drinking nutriments and all them sort of, I had all these nourishment drinks. And there was boxes and boxes of something else as well. And I was allowed to puff in my room. No way. Oh, mate, it was in, the, in the hospital. In the hospital. In the hospital. I shit you not. <laughs> no, obviously, I'm flying at that time of my life. Like I'm flying. Like you couldn't. I, I couldn't be touched. Like financially, materialistic. Everything. I had everything you could ever want, apart from a a ten million pound villa. I never had the ten million pound villa. I just had like the million pound apartments, half a million pound apartments, that sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So you move about a lot. So. You're moving into nice little gaffs and nice little bits and pieces. But you had everything you need over there. What year was this? 2006. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, 2006. Um, 2006 to 2012, basically, was when I was over there. And it was, uh, it was, uh, it was an experience I'm glad I've had. And it's a place that I call home, if that makes sense. Like, my kids were born over there and they're dying to go back. I mean, they've still been over there to see their friends. So it's, uh... Do you reckon, like, during those years, like, Port of Manus, was it kind of, did it feel like the movie, the business looked? Like, the way you talk, <laughs> the way he's like... See, it's this. It's, it all has similarities, right? So, for argument's sake, the storyline is pretty accurate. But the demonstration and the delivery of the characters was slightly off, if that makes sense. Do you know what I'm saying? So, okay. Like, it's... In Spain, yeah, the infrastructure have the power, not the gangsters. So you got to do as you're told, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, otherwise, you get ironed up. Right. And it's just that simple. So the way they've demonstrated, like, the gangsters in England going over to Spain and being, uh, we're, we're telling the, the, the man what to do, no, don't worry like that. And they, they tell you how you work. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's different. There's an order over there, and that's the difference with the police. And they respect their own police over there. The police are respected. What do you think's better system? Their system's much better. Yeah, yeah, of course it is, isn't it? Like, even like, even if you're in that world, like it's only the old bill that deliver all the puff. And do you think the, in that world is it a more like regimented world out there where like the civilians and less going to get yeah, touched? Because it almost doesn't seem, unless you're looking for it, you're not going to see that kind of life. No, out there. Yeah, you don't. The, the civilians don't do it, but anything that messes the tourist trade up, they don't like. And that's what I've done. Right. So that's why they didn't like me in Spain. Right, okay. So they pushed you out? Yeah, pushed me out of my bad the police. Said I had to live in Estepona. So was it that whole traumatic experience there which made you decide, you know what, I don't want any kid to go through that and I'm going to change? Because no. what made you do a U-turn and want to... Because what you're doing now is profoundly great, but it's not... It's the opposite direction, isn't it? It's all opposite because... So, right, in a nutshell, think of me like this, right? I spent my whole life trying to get to the top of the ladder of something that was supposed to be great, where I'm helping other people not necessarily be, not go to prison. Because everybody that knows me knows that anybody that... And this is what I'm going to talk about, the exploitation as well now, right? So anybody that I loved couldn't go to prison. So I used to always make them find somebody that can go to prison. But listen, listen, just find someone who don't give a f yeah, just to give it to him. Let them do it. Stop doing this stupid shit. This is something I've had from an early age. From when I used to say to my mates, "Why do you work for that geezer? Oh, he's a he's a such and such. He's a such and such." I said, "But he's using you." So my buzz growing up was always to emasculate the gangsters. So if you said you was a bad man, Mark, I'm not kidding. And that was it. And there ain't a man out here that can say I've done any different. And I went all around the country, all around Europe, and most of the world back. Was there a certain point where, like, you'd had enough reputation where tests stopped? No, no, no. What is the tests? Right. So you asked two questions, right? Because my brain's autistic as well, so I remember this. When you ask a question, my brain just goes off in it. So the first question was, what was the turning point in me turn my life on crime? So let me get to that. Right, let yep. me get that out of the way. So basically, when you get to the top of the ladder and when you're handling, dealing and consulting with hundreds of millions of pounds of trade, it's all going on, right? Yep. Tons and tons every day are getting negotiated over here with the big boys, yeah? The big, big boys, the people that was above my level. Yeah. And is that like, do were you constantly work with those guys? Finish. Just let me sorry, sorry. Yeah, you'll get it, you'll get it, you'll get it. <laughs> so all, all these people over there grafting. Now, I am 
friends with all this consortium, all these people. I never had any partners. I never worked for anybody. So a lot of people get caught in the game because they work for people. So they're banned by rules and sort of expectation. I've done this for you. We've been together so long. Well, where are you going? What are you doing? No, you can't do that. So I've never had that. I've always been a lone ranger. So me going to Europe, I went to Europe on my own. And I got to the top of the ladder on my own. I pushed and prodded and bullied my way through. But I had to have a level of integrity. So the one thing that got me through everything was the integrity. Do you understand? Like, I wouldn't allow my integrity to break. And that's what got me to the top of the ladder on the criminal fraternity. And that's what got me the respect that I earned. Because I wouldn't bend, break or fold. And I didn't care how many people there was or who it was. If I was right, then I was right and we're taking it to the grave and that is it. You're going to have to die for your agenda. And that was my mindset when I was growing up. So when I got to Spain and I just sort of got in with everybody, I'm actually watching everybody at the top. And I'm making money, I'm doing what I want, I'm getting what I want. I'm, I, I was doing my own little puff on the side with Nasta Pona. I was doing a, um, a few weed grows and had a little turnaround of products myself building that have gone on to be market brand products within Europe and the rest of the world. You know I mean, like, I cultivated a couple of strains that are on the market and have been on the market since 2009. You know I mean, so <clears throat> I won't mention them because it could put me in a bit of bother, but they are my strains. <laughs> so I'm telling you, so there's things in life that we do and we go through. So I got to the stage where there ain't nowhere to go, right? So now it's what you do with the money, right? And I'm just looking at everything, just thinking, wow, this is deep. This is deep. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I don't want to be him. I don't want to be him and I don't want to be him. I don't want the headache. They have headache. They have headache, like, like you couldn't imagine, where they have ailments because of their headache. They have issues because of their headache, physical issues, mental issues. But like, it's just, it's just nuts, yeah? So I'm looking and thinking, I don't really want to be that. I've never got in this to be that stressed. I've got in this to get out of all the stress. So then basically, my grace in God was getting nicked for four murders, believe it or not. So I'm nicked for four murders in 2012, yeah? Um, so I get extradited from Spain for four murders and that um, with Dale Cregan um, and he hand related all the people he two police officers and the father and the son do you hear about that? was that in Liverpool? In Manchester oh yeah yeah that's yeah the guy he's got one eye as well right? yeah, 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 yeah. mad so, yeah I was supposed to be <clears throat> his guy his boss and I'll finance him and all of this all over the months but he was part of the working infrastructure that was connected to a strain of people that I was working with very closely. So because there was some connection to him and me, metaphorically, the police try to make a case circumstantially with no connecting or binding factor. So no, out of 122 phones, not one of them run my phone ever. Do you know what I mean? There was no clear line of communication with anybody but two straight goals in, in Dover, that he was in Dover, yeah, because the police had, in, this is what got me to not guilty, the police had intelligence that he was in Dover, sticking it on someone that the police was working with, yeah, that lived in Dover. And the police had that, in, and that's what got me to not guilty, because I knew that they had that by someone else's case. So when I've asked them to produce it, my sister said, I wouldn't do that if I was you. I said, no, you need to get them to produce his evidence. And they said, oh, we can't do it. I said, you got to call him a liar and tell them that we know you've got a statement saying this. And my barrister wouldn't do it. So I sat there and got another barrister and they'd done it and we got the not guilty because they withheld their information to miss me because of my criminal links. But while I'm on remand, I'm still grafting. I'm still doing what I'm doing. So when I got out a year later, I've gone through the, the debt list because everyone does their figures. Gone through my debt list, and there's a young kid who owes 200 grand. I thought, cheeky little bastard. You get a product for a thousand pounds, you can do it three thousand. You get another product, you get 15 grand, you can do it 30 grand. So there's no room for messing about. 
Dus dat is het beetje de ik. En dan ben ik dit al focus op fucking libé. So, so all the kids are going to grab him and teach him a lesson and then found out he's my son's best mate, or one of my son's best mates. And that was, that, that was my penultimate turning point. Because it was then that I realised the ripple effects. Because at first, it went from killing a kid to shooting a kid to teaching him a lesson to hurting him. And every step of the process would have made my son's life uncomfortable would have made my children's life uncomfortable. So I thought, wow, that's just one kid. Look how much problems are out here. So we're getting all the graft here and all the work here and all the guns here, and then what the f who's responsible? So I didn't want to be responsible for that stuff no more. Uh, uh, that even made me cry then. Now I really don't want to be responsible because I used to buzz in it, buzz in it. I used to buzz in it. I used to buzz off people like you as well. <laughs> I'll tell you the words, back in the day, now, don't take offence to this, but this is just, I'm, I'm, I'm honest, because this is, but I would have made an example of you, you know that. I would, have, I would have done something to physically emasculate you in a way, because... And was that because you thought I was emasculating you, or because you're taking offence to how I spoke to you, or...? Yeah, it's just, it's just bad communicating. It's just, when you're in a world of grooming, exploiting, manipulation, yeah? All you've got to do is manipulate everybody to do your agenda. It's always about your agenda. In the criminal world, it's your agenda. Do you understand? So mm. my brain's always on that. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's mine. So when you come into contact with people with that mindset... Yeah, it's, it's like a power struggle. Like, yeah. I want it this way, you want it that way. And but I don't, though. I yeah. just want to be me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just want to be me. And it's just because... I'm not everybody's flavour, taste or smell. There's always a little bit of conflict because, like I said to you, I am reality. It's mad. It's mad. I'm reality. You think you're hard? Okay. Um, <laughs> Saw that earlier, didn't we? Well, no, I'm trying to say, anyone can think what they want. I know how hard I am. And there's a difference <laughs> knowing your heart and knowing your heart or thinking your heart. So that leads me on to this next question. And that's, once you set up your reputation and you've done some things which has shown that you are reality, then do you just not get tested? Does it make life quite easy at a certain point? Or did you find yourself running into having to constantly set an example? When I think you constantly have to set an example until the, the bars raised so high that there's no question. So I've been investigated for 25 murders. Who wants to try their luck? Do you understand? It's like only an, only an absolute idiot would think, I oh, know what I can do with him. And so I've got no time for idiots. So it wouldn't affect me anymore. So like did it, I guess what I'm saying then is it did get to a certain point where you were like, life's quite good, life's easy. Like I've put a lot of work in to a point where now I'm not having to. See, I felt like flying you like that, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was deep. Because this is what I'm saying to you. I was going to, I'll keep doing it. And this is what I'm saying to you. It's mad. So I was just going to just go, what? Just switch into character because it's, it's, the reality of that world is just fear and manipulation. It's just, it's just filth, the lot of it. The whole lot of it. So like going back, how did you like get into this kind of life? Obviously like. My mum and dad was no, not good role models. My mum was abandoned by my dad. My dad left my mum and moved into another woman and left us sitting on milk um, tea chests, empty tea chests, it sold everything in our house and just f***ed off of his bird. Do you know what I mean? And my mum was wounded and she, I don't think she recovered. Like, I think she's just getting better now, but she went through a bit of substance abuse, done a few bits and bobs, and uh, kept on fighting through, but that ruined my mum, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, it was then, when my dad had left, I sort of felt I had to carry everyone. Yeah. So how, like, what age did you feel like, okay, cool, I need to like step my game up and be like, okay, I need to be the man of the house. 11. That's mad. Is that when you first started making money as well, when you were 11 or? Nah, that's when money got serious when I was 11. That's when I found out, yeah, the little strip. Because I used to nick cannabis off my dad, yeah, when I was eight, nine, ten, and sell it to all the older kids for fifty pounds for a carrier bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking I was cool. So I remember going carnival one year, but I'm 
Sec, first year, secondary school, we've gone carnival, we've all chipped in because we're going to this place called Salamis. I said, I can't go in there, my dad, my dad might be in there. Right, so I'll give everybody a fiver. So I'm expecting a big bag to come out. So we've all given fiver, there's about 12, 15 of us. And then they come out of these little strips, and I was like, what the fuck's that? Like, well, that's what you get for a fiver. I was like, oh, oh, oh man, I was like, fuck, look, imagine what I've been giving away. So from that day, at 11 years of age, is when everything started getting bagged up, and my dad got tons of cess. And when my dad died, the black, tight, compressed sense media weed has stopped coming in since my dad died. He gets little bits of it now and then, but you don't get it no more. And everybody knows that. Yeah, but people try to make it themselves now, isn't it? No, they can't. Cess is cess. See, cess is cess. You can't replicate cess. Simple. You can't. There's only one way to grow sense media weed, and it's done in Jamaica. You can't replicate that. Trust me. You cannot. So what's your take on this, like, you know, when you say Cali, that being grown in UK? So would that well, be- it's not, it's not Cali, is it? It's a Cali strain. Okay. It's a Cali strain, but it's only Cali when it's got Cali minerals. Do you understand? When it's grown on the same soil. Yeah. It's, 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 it's only a Cali strain. It's like when you buy a rose, a rose ain't from England, is it? No. It's not an original rose. It's, 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 it's a byproduct of the original soil. It will never, it'll never look like an original rose because it hasn't got the right soil. Or that, I will, I'll say that as a, an example because the rose might even be English. I don't know. But yeah. you won't get... Like a poppy or something or a daffodil. Daffodil is obviously Dutch in it. But you're saying it'll grow different over here. What's, yeah, what's the one that grows in If you grew a poppy here or a poppy in Afghanistan... <laughs> They're gonna have two different mineral content. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know so one's gonna produce heroin and one won't. Because one might have the mineral content that Afghanistan's got in the plant. Mm, it's it's mad how, how science works. What's you this? were going into some pretty deep stuff earlier that I found like fascinating when you were talking about like reality and like was that something you've always had? I've like, always known I was different. Yeah. Because no one made sense. Because I've always been a don't tell me, show me. You've got it where? Let me see. Show me. How? Otherwise, and that's what I masculate people. So I'll be like, come on then. And they'll be like, what? I say, you said you can do this. They say, yeah, I said, well, come on then. Like, well, I'm not all about that. I say, wow, why? We can get money doing that. Let's just go and do it, bro. Mm, wow. How do you do it then? Tell me. I'll go, right, let me see if I can do it. And I'll go and do it. No, I'll come on. Why don't you do it? Oh, I ain't going to do it. Because I've done everything first. All right. Well, apart from steaming, <laughs> I never steam first. Flare. Yeah. Flare started first. What's, but what's that? Steaming on the trains. Right, okay. Right, cause back in the day, people used to get on the train and rob everybody on the train and rob everybody on the bus. Like, that was part of the steaming. <laughs> they called That's... that steaming. But I wasn't the first to do that. Right, okay. I copied, I copied some of the elders, Bart and Flare. But, a.k.a. Flair, yeah, because I've been said I can use his, his nickname, can't tell his real name. But <laughs> he, I'm, he, they done it at, um, uh, at a festival somewhere, or they done it somewhere, and they run through, and they robbed everyone. And then I was on part of the Untouchable Graffiti Gang back in the 80s, and we were on a train one day, and I've gone to my pals, and I can talk about this, I've got nicked for robbing persons, Unknown of proce- of products unknown. So I robbed someone they didn't know of things they didn't know, but they know I robbed someone. Right, so anyway, on a train, and I was one of my pal, because I see all the old lot do it in the party, yeah, so I said to them, look, we should just rob everyone on the train, you know, and he went, we're not bad. I said, I said, I fell over there, just give them a flying head, but I'm going to just rob everyone. So we're like, what are you on about? I mean, what? So I run up to this geezer, and I just started talking to him, and asked him the time my bed patted him. Yeah, and he had this big camera on him, yeah? And I remember, <laughs> I read by him, and then he just went with a, it looked like an aerosol can, and he, tsh, I thought, what's this wearing with the angel for? <laughs> and then next thing, I was like, ah! I couldn't breathe with CS gas, and I was like, my eyes went, my mouth went, and we all got nicked. Yeah, but then that just become a trend, just getting on buses and trains, just robbing everyone with a bandana on. How many people, <laughs> most people you reckon could be on a bus? I don't know, 25 people, I suppose. Yeah, they get like a headache or is it quite easy? Yeah, they just got weighed in by a 
10, 15 young kids, isn't it? Oh, really? You don't get brave turn back on you? No, no. What I'm saying is we attacked people in firms, like packs. So if you got cheeky, you just got attacked. And right, okay. And that was it. Shops, we never paid for alcohol, food, snack, nothing. Just went and took it everywhere. And that was different because we never had CCTV. Do you know what I mean? Never had British Transport Police. So, I mean, we used to beat British Transport Police up in the beginning. Ha! <laughs> because yeah. it's law that they have to have a police on every um, station. Yeah. But, so, the police have been there forever, but they never had any authority. It's weird. But now they've got authority. Yeah, like, how does your charity work then? How Because you... You do different things, don't you? Like boxing, football, all these different things to keep well, people... So what I've got, I'm an engagement officer. And what I do, I engage young kids that are into football, boxing, music, media. And now we're moving into construction. But the construction is not a million percent million. Yet. We're doing the first project in the new year. Once that's up and running, then we'll be all right. But the football, <laughs> boxing, music and media... The stuff that I'm instantly connected to because of my own companies anyway. And is it within prison reforming people who have no, made right, mistakes? So I've developed artists. I've got three artists I'm developing now. Getting oh, really? Back. Yeah, big artists as well, man. What kind of music? Um, yeah, I'll pass my phone. I'll play one of them now. It's just non-stop fighting growing up. So when people say where does the violence start from, then it's just, it's just part of that lifestyle growing up. He's telling your story, isn't he? He's not his own story. He's telling your story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing, we're doing lots of different angles. We're doing because it's not about it's about using me as a object not to become. Yeah, me as the excuse not to carry on because if that makes sense. Talking about someone who was just shotting food on in the flats. What have they done? Do you know what I mean, you want people who've been at the top or close to the top or around the top? That's yeah, in there. Like, I walked away from millions of pounds of assets and took, took like, you can, you can make it, have it and do it. And, and it's all bollocks, mate. Like, it's, it's the set eight dramas, problems, prisons and death. So what's the point? So, I mean, there's no point to it. That's why I don't do it. So I know you said you had a couple of mil a couple of years back. What happened with that? Did you get that poked so, off no, you? Or? No, no, no. It all just goes. It all just goes. It all just goes. You say to people, I'm having no more to do it. They say, what are you doing with your money? What are you doing with this? What are you doing with that? You say nothing. Keep it. Keep it. I ain't taking it. I can't take it with me. I'll give away all my watches. I'll, I'll, the last watch I had was in 2017. It was a Tech Philippe 5980. Yeah, and they got given away. So I couldn't bring any of that stuff with me onto this new journey. And that was just a choice I made. But it feel like tainted to you or like... It's just bad energy. That's from a world I'm not belong to no more. So I've got friends that... I won't even take money off. They won't. Like, everyone asks you, you're all right, you're all right, right. But it's not like, 
no one's sending you nothing, no one does nothing, because everyone knows I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing it for real, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm, I can't take criminal money if I'm not a criminal, I can't do it, so if you're at it and you're in it, you're my pal, I, I love you, you're still my pal, but I can't take it even if I wanted to, do you know what I mean, I've got to go yeah. through this poverty, I've got to go without, I've got to build myself back up from nothing, and that's it, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's admirable, for sure, isn't it? Because that's the easier way to do it, obviously. I'm sure you've got mates who give you a lot of money, Mate, but I'm you don't want to take that. People said to me, oh, you couldn't get back in if you wanted to. I said, why? Why? I weren't in at your level. I weren't in at your level. I was in over there and over there and over there. They're still my mates. They're all proud of me, mate. All my proper pals are proud of me. They're proud of what I'm doing. They send me messages all the time. We're proud of you, mate. Can't fucking believe you. No, yeah, never thought you'd turn your life around. Good luck, son. Because what people don't realise is people can't get out. I mean, it it only takes a Marvin Herbert to get out. It's not as simple to get out as you think it is. Like you've got to go without. That means your whole family's got to suffer. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I put my family through it right now, and I've done for the last eight years, and they've suffered. Do you know what I'm saying? So now things are turning around, things are moving, and things are getting better. The family will be back on track more quicker than you can say Jack Rabbit, bro. It's been a long time coming, and that's the thing people got to understand. It ain't an easy journey, unless you can eat this shit happily, mate. Just get a job, because if you don't, it's going to eat shit, lots of it, and shit you don't even like the taste of. But like, at least if you go to work, you like the taste of that. You like this, you like that. But mate, when you're eating bird and no one's looking after your family or no one's looking after your people and everything's fucked, then it's not a good way to be. It's not a good place to be. It's not a good infrastructure to have. So I will just condone. Everything to do with legitimacy, and I will condone anything to do with um, breaking the law. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't condone anything to do with breaking the law. You can't condone anything to do with breaking the law. It's, it's just, it's just, just, just there's, there's no need. Like there used to be a need. There used to be a need when, when there was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. There was no opportunities to yeah. do anything. Do you know what I mean, you couldn't even walk in and get a job. You couldn't get nothing. So you had, you were pushed into a, a, a corner and we'd done the best we could, but all of us tried to get out. And every one of my friends that I was connected to in that world have naturally all turned their lives around. Do you know what I mean? And in about three years' time, I think we're going to do one of them mad ones where we'll all be together under the same roof at the same time in a good place. And that's what's coming. And we'll be like... Yeah. United Nations, mate. <laughs> Is that what we said in a previous pod? Like, whenever you cheat something, or you, you you always end up paying a price for it later on. Even if you get ahead temporarily, something's gonna happen. You could go back to like, karma. if you didn't do it straight, you know what I mean? You can't take you cheat. You are your karma. Yeah. So whatever you do will come back to you. Anything. Yeah. Everything. Every slight comment, every little fault, everything you say comes back. Everything. Everything you say, it's all a curse. Yeah. Everything comes out of your mouth. Yeah, is to detach you from your spirit. Detach you from your spirit, right? That's what it's for. So it's about getting in contact with your true self. Your true self is the same consciousness as my true self. We are one. But like you've got to learn. See, you've got to learn what you need to learn to be where I am, if that makes sense. Like, not physically, but just spiritually. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. emotionally, it would have been an headache. Do you know what I mean? But because there's no emotion applied, there's no headache. And I'll just see what other people have got to learn. Do you know what I'm saying, John? Now, you need to get back in the reviews ripped up before. Listen, we're live now. We're live now. Like it's, it's, it's getting recorded now. So everyone's going to see how much you're going to put into yourself, what percentage you're going to put back into yourself. See? He's bulking right now. No, but bulking. So he's not having a cut. Oh, okay. Having like a six. Right, I've Go got, on. I've got, I've got, I've got power lifters now. <clears throat> Get him on the phone right now. Right, like he was twenty-one stone. He's now ripped up, up. and he's never going to be a power lifter again. He's going to do my circuits. And he said, "Wow, wow." I'm telling you, mate. Like, I can bench press. I've got the videos. I can prove it to you. Two hundred kilos. <clears throat> That's it. That's the pace I'll do it at as well. And shoulders and squat. I can do ch shoulder press. Not shoulder press, but I can squat 
200 kilo bench press yeah. 200 kilo yes I can what can yes, you do Ian? to be fair I squat light now like 140 you... peak though peak peak 220 mm. me and you do the gym sash when you're ready <laughs> see, see me <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you my I'm giving you my damage quotes that's on my damage <laughs> <laughs> you see that, that's, yeah. that's, what I'm, that's my me fuck bro that's me fuck I'm doing them mate oh bro you the, we outside, you're going to see, I, we talked about the start of the podcast. We had Marv saying, kick as hard as you can. I'm telling you, we were kicking as hard as you can. He's still calling us a b- and saying, kick harder. And this guy <laughs> is made of iron, bro. He's like Terminator. So the, the, the harder you kick, the more impact there is. So the less it will hurt me because it's not dense. Because what you fail to appreciate is when you're punching, you're not throwing your body weight behind it. You're throwing your arms in it. So that's not that hard. Everyone thinks they're punching hard, but they're not. It's just momentum. It's just arm weight. So it doesn't actually hurt. But if you threw the punch properly, it hurt a little bit more. But no one punches correctly, so. Even boxers. Some boxers can't even hurt me. In fact, I've only ever been put down once by young Joe Selkirk. He got, and he did catch me off balance, but I went down and got straight back up. Man. But yeah. And that's it. Yeah, that's the only time I've ever touched that. <laughs> that's so, bro. And that was after I got shot as well. So listen, life is about what you're prepared to do. And don't moan about not doing shit. If you're not going to be the best in the gym, then don't moan about not being able to do what the best can do. Definitely. If you're not prepared to go where other people have gone, then don't moan about their journey. No you know excuses. I mean? Yeah. But Accountable people, for everything. People say to me, you think you're something special? I say, I don't think I'm something special. I'd like to see you get through half of what I have and smile. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, I don't think I'm a bad guy. I think I'm a pretty decent guy. I think I'm pretty easy to go on with. And I think I'm being a, a lot less emotional in my older age. Definitely. Yeah. It's been great having you, uh, having you here, isn't it? it yeah, definitely. Fun, Thanks a lot for coming on, man. Is there, is there anything you want to talk about um, before um, we close up to get on video? Any socials you want to plug or plug your charity where people can reach out and make donations? No, no it's, it's, it's not. It's just HMP Herbert Marvin Project and Marvin Herbert, Mr. Marvin Herbert on all the social media platforms. Like it's out there, isn't it? Um, people know where it's at. Yeah. Marvin at themarvinherbert.com is the email as well. Info at mrmarvinherbert.com. Well, I think it's, they'll make a movie it's, about it's you one day. Bro, no, it's, it's getting better now, you know. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, yeah, bro. You know, bro uh, nice. 14 years of age at the moment. Oh, sick. And we've already had 20, 30 grand. It's mad. Who's playing you? We don't know yet, but we'll get them. We'll get them. Sick. Yeah. And are you going to play yourself when you get to your age? or After I get shot. Oh, sick. Yeah. Look so forward to that. After I get shot. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be around, it's because it's, each, you've got 76 convictions, yeah? And each conviction is about seven offences, if that makes sense. There's seven offences to one conviction. It's mad. But because you'll be able to see, like, when you get nicked for one, there's seven or eight of them, and they've all the same money. So there was a lot of money we stole as kids. Like, people don't realise we stole car stereos as kids, yeah? But we used to do 20, 30 stereos a day sometimes. And get hundred pound each from. Yeah, Do you know what I mean that's a couple of grand for a twelve, thirteen year old kid. There's a lot of money. Do you know what I mean, I mean we was all smoking crack back then as well, sniffing, partying. Then the rave scene come out, and it was all over. So be mindful of having fun. So if I one piece of advice you're going to give someone right now who's thinking of doing something criminal, like they're used to it, you know, they're accustomed to doing it. So I'm going to give everybody the same knowledge that I'll give everybody, the same information that I'll give everybody, right? And this might sound difficult, it might sound challenging, but if you have anything of any sort, then you can do this. Because if you don't want to be skint, and you don't want to be poor, and you don't want to have headaches, and you don't have dramas, then what you could do if you're under the age of 30, yeah, because by the time you're 40, if you've got these five things, by the time you're 40, then you'll never be broke a day after and you'll develop millions, if not billions. And that's five foreign languages fluently. Russian, Arabic, Chinese, Spanish and English. Yeah? 
get to university if you're young enough and study business and history. And that's all you need. And that is your infrastructure for life. Five foreign languages fluently. And I say Russian, Chinese, Arabic, Spanish and English because they're the five power languages of the power nations that are going to take over with tangible minerals to cause and create economies. And life as we knew it has ended. And the end of the days are here. And it even says in the Bible. So in the valley of the dark or the valley of the blind, the one eyed man is king. <laughs> Genesis. Yeah, that's Genesis. So there's things happening and we're going somewhere and it's very challenging, but crime definitely does not pay. And get involved, five foreign languages, business and history, and you'll go anywhere you want to go in life, anywhere on the planet, and build whatever you can. And that is just the only bit of knowledge I'll give everyone. We've been saying that as well, haven't we, that, that Russia, Arabic, Chinese, that's the place where the real money's going to be now. This, what we know, and this easy life is going to slowly dwindle away. Dwindle away because it's all debt-related anyway. Yeah. Right? It's real. None of it's real. Everything is owned. Every, every house in England's on, on debt. Everything's dead. Everything's a bill. Everything's a debt. Everything's debt in this country. Everyone, even the economies are based on debt. They yeah. trade each other's debts off. Do you know what I mean? It's mad. So the reality we live in the reality that we think. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. So before we get too political, you know, it's, it's just never going to change unless people change. And the only way people will change is if we come together and work together. And everybody just got to do what they're good at. Don't try to do what other people can do. Just do what you're good at. And then we'll build infrastructures for that. And know what it is you're good at. That's the main thing. Don't think you're good at saying. Just know what you're good at and you'll be all right. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Marvin. This is a great podcast. Yeah, great pod. See you soon. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Cheers, brother.